brought to you by Growth Dragons. It is a China-focused newsletter where I, Elvin, will be sharing with you on a regular basis what's going on in China. Having understand both the West and the Eastern culture, I'll be in a better position to give you the valuable insights that you might be looking for when you invest in China. So do subscribe to growthdragons.substack.com. That's where you can receive my regular insights about China. Hope to see you there and enjoy the rest of the video. Hi there, this is Elvin from Dr. Wealth. I did a video about Hong Kong dividend stocks a year ago, or I call the strategy dogs of the Hang Seng. And there have been quite a number of changes and as well as good comments from the viewers. And now I'm going to give you an update and as well as a modified version of this dogs of the Hang Seng index strategy. So to start off, it's good to do a quick recap of what this strategy steps entail. Right? So the very first step is that we want to rank the Hang Seng Index constituents by their dividend yield. And the higher dividend yields will go on top of the ranking. And, and second, we want to buy the top 30% okay, of the index components. So that would help us select the highest yielding stocks within the index. And then the third step is that once you build up the portfolio one year later, we need to do the re-ranking again and we have to review the holdings, right? So the top 30% might have changed. And if the stocks that we used to hold is no longer in the top 30%, we need to sell them and replace with the new ones that have entered the top 30%. And at the same time, the price movement will have made the allocation in each stock to be different and that's where we also need to rebalance the portfolio into into equal weighted proportion for every holding that we have so that is the yearly basis and the last step is of course to repeat step one to four again every single year so it's not a taxing strategy because you're just using the index to help you select the stocks right which are essentially the blue chips then you use the dividend yield to rank them to identify which are the more undervalued because the higher dividend yield stocks are the more undervalued stocks and you just need to do it once a year. You don't need to monitor it daily basis and things like that. So it is quite a stress-free investment strategy that uh, that a layman can do, that a man on the street can do. So let's go through now. But now let's go through what are some of the modification and uh, consideration that you need to have when you want to implement dots of the Hang Seng strategy. So the very first one is that there have been changes to the number of stocks because uh, HSI is undergoing a revamp. Every single year, they add in more stocks. Initially, they only have like 30 stocks. Now they have ballooned to about 80 stocks. If you just take the top 30%, that would mean that your portfolio has 24 stocks. Okay? It might sound a bit more excessive and I think that about 15 stocks would have done the job. So which means that you need to make certain adjustments instead of getting the top 30%, just take the top 15 stocks with the ranking itself. And the second thing is that some stocks have given special dividends and special dividends are not recurring in nature which means that it's unlikely going to re it's unlikely going to repeat the following year which will cause the dividend yield to drop the next year. And that's not what we want. So we should exclude the special dividend from the calculation that would lower the yield and hopefully get a more accurate ranking of the dividend yields. And number three is that we also need to apply a 10% dividend tax. Okay. Although Hong Kong stocks do not have dividend taxation, but China domicile companies have dividend taxation. So it's dependent on where the company registered its business. It's not where it is listed. So even if a China domicile company is listed in Hong Kong, it, when it gives dividend, there will be a 10% taxation. So we should also adjust the dividend yield based on this 10% tax on some of these do China domicile companies, which may be in the Hang Seng Index. Fourth, there's also a lot size issue because in Hong Kong listed counters, they don't have a standard lot size. You can't buy one share. There is a minimum number of shares that you need to buy per lot. And it's not constant, right? Some stocks may be 500 shares per lot. Some stocks may be 1,000 shares per lot. And the share price are different. So it is very confusing. So it becomes very challenging to size the position properly. And the worst is that some stocks, the minimum lot size can be very daunting for investors with more limited the capital right, it might be out of reach and in such cases we would need to skip such stocks so that we can keep keep the strategy more manageable when it comes to capital allocation so most importantly this is what you've been waiting for what is the top 15 stocks in the Hang Seng docs of Hang Seng strategy so I'm going to review to you soon after making all this adjustment right this is 
what you get okay and you get an average yield of eight percent which is pretty impressive but let me blow it up for you and this is the most important table that you want to see right so you can see the ranking of the top 15 um, this was done about a week ago right so of course the current yield will change slightly and that's where you need to uh, and that's where you need to do your own adjustment accordingly so of course uh, you will see a lot of uh, it's not surprising that we see a lot of uh, companies coming from the traditional sector. Right? We see real estate developer, we see oil and gas, we see banks, okay, mainly from these uh, three industry. So, so I know what some of you might be thinking, right? Because of the property crisis in China, a lot of people are quite fearful of buying these uh, real estate companies. And, and I think it's fine if you want to skip them. Okay, so that is uh, one consideration that you want to have to manage the risk on your side. Okay, so that is, uh, but that would mean that you need to expand the list or you just hold more, less, or you just hold less stock, right? If you minus the real estate developer, there are three of them in the list, you will end up holding 12 stocks. Okay, so that is another way to adjust. So there's another way to adjust your portfolio holdings. But I would not recommend you to adjust too much, right? Because if you put too much discretion into picking the stocks, then might as well don't use the ranking, just pick from the index directly, okay? So I will always, uh, I always believe that sometimes a purely quantitative strategy might be more superior than uh, using our own investor biases to select them. So there you go, these are the top 15 stocks of the Hang Seng Index, yielding of average 8%. And, and just to give you a more detail of what were excluded, right? Orient Overseas, this is the container, uh, sh container shipping company. Uh, Henderson Land, CK Hutchison. The reason why I excluded these three, even though they're in the top 15, was because their lot sizes mean that you need to invest, you need to invest 20,000 Hong Kong dollars in each of them minimally. So this is why uh, I excluded them. Right? Remember, one of the considerations is to exclude the big ones. Exclude the uh, heavy exclude the big investment counters and uh, this is some additional info right so if you want to build a 15 stock portfolio it will cost around hong kong dollars two hundred forty four thousand dollars or translate to sing dollars is about forty three thousand sing and if that is too much for those who are, have more limited capital then you can consider a smaller portfolio of 10 stocks that would be about 26,000 sing or 152,000 hong kong dollars so you so now you understand where I'm coming from, right? Because of the minimum lot sizes, it can be more daunting or more capital intensive when it comes to investing in the dots of the Hang Seng Index strategy. So to conclude, I do think that such a dividend dot strategy is simple and is as easy for uh, even a beginner to start investing in blue chip dividend stocks. And and we are seeing such a high yield, right? 8% average dividend yield from blue chip stocks. This is unheard of most of the time. That's also because Hong Kong stocks has been beaten down pretty much and hence the yield has shot up quite a fair bit. But I don't think these yields are sustainable, right? Eventually the recovery will come, the yield will go down. And that means that uh, for investors who still believe in the Hong Kong, so for investors who still believe in the China story, this might be a better way, right? Because you're still collecting dividend because they're still collecting dividends while waiting for the share price to recover because Hong Kong, because China stocks have been down for three years, right? And a lot of people have been giving up and a lot of people probably have given up waiting for the price recovery. But at the same time, if you're, but if you're paid handsome dividends while you wait, it might make the wait more palatable. So this might be a suitable strategy for you to consider in this current climate. Thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.